Okay, so let's look at the generation of a public and a private key for a full homomorphic encryption. So homomorphic encryption is where we want to operate on values uh, but still keep them secret. So in this case, Bob and Alice might get Eve to process some data for them. So Bob will uh, use his public key to encrypt his value and Alice will use the same. Then Bob and Alice can give the encrypted values to Eve and Eve can operate on them. Eve can then do some sort of operation uh, such as finding out which is the largest value or what's the total value and then give the encrypted value result back to Bob and Alice. They will then use their private key to be able to decrypt uh, the values. In this way, Eve cannot determine what the original values were or even what the result of the calculation was. So it might be that we want to find out who's older, Bob and Alice, without actually revealing their age. We might want to find out if Bob has worked for more days than Alice. And we could calculate the total salary between Bob and Alice without revealing their income. The way that full homomorphic encryption or the DGHV system works is that we take our values, typically these are single bits. So we take a single bit and then we encrypt that a value with our secret key. It then goes into a function and we can operate it on the values, the cipher values, in the way that we'd normally do. And then when we get the result, we then decrypt it. Okay, so the public key can be applied here. And then the private key could be applied here. Okay, so this is an example. We might have uh, input values. We convert the integers to bits. They then become cipher bits. At this point here, we apply a public key, if we're using public key encryption. Then those cipher bits go into a cipher circuit with exclusive ORs for adds and multiplies, which is AND. And then in the output, we decipher the bits. If we're using public key encryption, we use our private key here to be able to decipher the bits and give us our output back again. So the way that DGHV works is that we take the message, which is an M value, that's a single bit, a 0 or a 1. Then we take our, our random values, and that's an R and a Q. So we generate these values, and then P becomes our private key. To decipher on the other side, we take our, our cipher and we apply it mod P. And we take the mod of 2 of that, that deciphers. So that's the, the normal way that we do it if we had a secret key. Okay, we have a secret key P or there and there. So this isn't a public key encryption system. This is secret key. So now, let's see if we can convert this method into a public key method. And the way that we do it is that we select a number of random values, R and uh, Q. And then we take our random number P and we generate our public key from these random values. Okay, so in each case, we can see that we have a message of zero here. So it's the normal way that we would cipher, but in this case, we're not ciphering the bits. We are assuming that the message bits are a zero. If we, if we assume that, 
our public key becomes a range of values based on these random numbers and also our secret key. So here we are here, so I'm going to use 32 values for the public key and the same again for, uh, I'm going to use a number of values for our cipher. So the public key, in this case, I generate a random number, R, that's between 1 and 10, I'll just keep them low, and then a Q value between 50,000 and 60,000. So the public key becomes P times Q times 2R. And this adds noise onto the onto the the key. So it's very difficult to actually determine the value of P which actually created the, the public key. Okay, so we can then print out the, the public key. To cipher the bits, what we do is that uh, we'll take a random sample from the public key to be able to cipher them. So in this case here, I'm generating three random numbers and then I'm picking off the values from the public key that we generated here, here, and then I'm going to add them all together. Okay, so then again we'll take a random value and then this time we'll add the sum times 2r, which is the random value, and then plus the value of the bits. Okay, so the bits are the bit values that we are actually ciphering. Then we can print that out. Okay, so if we just talk you through that again, we generate a number of values as if we were ciphering a zero. It doesn't matter what the random numbers are here because we don't ever need them again. We then take our private key, create the number, create uh, a number of public key values, and then that's then going to be used as our public key. We then pick off a number of those, create a sum of them, and then add that on to our cipher, and those become our cipher bits. To decrypt, we basically just take our cipher bits mod p and then take the mod of 2 because we're only interested in the, in, the, in the least significant bit and that's our decoded values. Okay, so this is what our key looks like. So this is a random value that I've selected here. This is my input values. Uh, this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. This is a number 16 then as an integer. We take our p-value and then what I've done here is generated 32 of these zero message bit ciphers. The receiver or the, uh, the, the sender, if they want to cipher the data, will then take a sample of these bits and then, as we saw before, create our cipher bits. Okay, so we're ending up with one, two, three, four, five, five cipher bits. And then on the other side, we just take mod P and then mod two. So let's have a look at what that looks like in real life. Okay, so here's a value, so we'll take a value of 14. So a value of 14 is this in binary. We take our p-value and then we cipher 32 values. We create 32 values for our public key. We then take a random uh, set of those values and then use that to cipher our bits. And we can see here we've decoded it successfully. Okay, so this is the code here. Okay, this is us. Uh, so we're we're, we're generating our private key here. 
Okay, quite small key. Obviously in real life it'd be much larger. We take our value in and then we're going to take our bits, convert it to a bit array. After that we're going to create our public key, it's setting this all up as zeros initially, but there'll be 32 of those values. And then we're going to create our cipher output, which is equal to the, the size of our the number of bits in our value. Okay, so the public key, as I said, will be generated from a number of ciphers for a message of zero. And then we can publish that as our public key. Okay, so there's a public key there, 32 random values. Next, we cipher by picking off three by picking off three values from our public key and adding them together. We'll create a random number again, and then we will cipher our bits. There's our message there. And we'll now cipher with the sum plus two times this random value. These are small random values, and then that becomes our cipher output, as we see here. Then when we receive that back, we'll just mod P, our private key, and then mod 2. Okay, so that's giving you an outline of how we can use public key encryption with homomorphic cipher. Thank you.